We love to praise African-American success because we know how hard it has been for our group trying to come up in the States. And the story of Marilyn Mosby is no different. This lady has been through a lot, but boy has she overcome some very interesting circumstances. She was born in Boston, Massachusetts, raised in the Dorchester section of the city. Her mother was 17 when she was born. Her mom and the father both became police officers. And you know what? Her grandfather was one of the first African-American police officers in the state. Talk about hard work. Yeah, and it pays off. And this young lady worked her way up to go to Tuskegee University. She graduated with honors, came back to Boston College, got a Juris Doctorate. But this is what makes it so interesting. She moved all the way to Baltimore and she was a law clerk and assistant state's attorney for Baltimore from 2005 to 2011. And you know what? She became the state's attorney for Baltimore City in 2013, being only 33 years old and defeating the incumbent Greg L. Bernstein in the Democratic primary, defeating him with 55% of the vote. Talk about ambition, talk about hard work. And guess what, too? <laughs> Man, the lady is fine as hell. I'm not even going to lie to you. And you know what? A young lady like this started to really galvanize a lot of people in the city. You know, Baltimore is a, a city that has a lot of talent, but a lot of bad things are going on there. So you know what? People started looking up to her, looking up to her as a young sister. A lot of black ladies, a lot of black women in the community started looking up to her. And you know what? She also went after criminals in the city. She started prosecuting the hell out of them. And not only that, remember the Freddie Gray case? Yes, she's the one that brought a lot of those people up to task, like putting their ass in jail, those police officers in the Freddie Gray. So that was already a good look for her. Unfortunately, she had a situation when this happened. Baltimore City State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby addressed a congregation at a Northwest Baltimore church today after being indicted by a federal grand jury last week. Sean Stryker has more and how some are showing their support. Sunday morning, Baltimore State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby attended church service where she was asked to speak to those in attendance. <laughs> Days after being indicted on federal charges, Baltimore State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby attending service at the Empowerment Temple in Baltimore, taking time to address the congregation. Without equivocation, I am innocent of the charges levied against me. I have done nothing wrong, and I'm confident that I'll be exonerated and my name will be cleared. Mosby doubling down on the statement she made Friday, vowing to continue doing her job. I make that same commitment to you all today. Thursday, a grand jury indicted Mosby on four felony counts, including charges of perjury and making false statements. Federal prosecutors allege she lied about suffering COVID-19 hardships to withdraw money without penalty from her retirement account and falsified information on loan applications for vacation homes in Florida. Reverend Robert Turner showing his support for Mosby with a prayer circle. People may ask you, well, why is a church, you know, wrapping their arms around somebody that's just been indicted with these type of crimes? It's because that's what Jesus would do. Reverend Turner even offered financial support to Mosby, which she declined. That you protect her. That Mosby says she plans to fight the charges against her. In Baltimore, Sean Stryker for WJZ. Yeah, yeah, it's not looking good. This is a lady that was doing community outreach. And um, huh, man, these charges are not good. But I forgot to mention one thing. Her husband is named Nick Mosby. He's also a brother that was doing very well. I believe he met her in Tuskegee University. He's an engineer and um, you know what? They got married and they were a power couple. Oh uh, yeah, but this happened here. Remember, he's the president of the Baltimore City Council. Now, you know, they had got these vacation homes and everything and there was some corruption going on with that. But you know, this lady actually gets convicted not only of two counts of fraud, one is COVID fraud, but she's been convicted of her third count, all right? 
of what she's been doing. And this is receiving some money on a mortgage application. So we had two previous charges in this one. Let's play the clip. The jury handed down its verdict about a 30 minutes ago or so. Marilyn Mosby guilty on count two in this case, guilty of one count of mortgage fraud for lying about the source of $5,000 that she was allegedly gifted at closing. That is what she was found guilty of today. She was standing trial here on two counts of mortgage fraud related to a pur two purchases of Florida vacation properties, a home in Kissimmee in 2020. The jury found her not guilty of that charge, the charge connected to that uh, home sale. She was, however, found guilty of mortgage fraud related to her purchase of a condominium on the Florida Gulf Coast in February 2021. We're waiting for the prosecution to come out and talk to us possibly. They have yet to leave the federal courthouse. Marilyn Mosby left a few moments ago. She said nothing. One member of her entourage made an obscene gesture when we asked for comment. Other than that, we got no comment from Marilyn Mosby or her team. We also got no comment from Marilyn Mosby's lead defense attorney, Jim Wida. He's represented her at this trial as well as her first trial, which was a perjury trial that was back in November. And that federal jury convicted her on both counts of perjury in that case. We do not know any details yet about when sentencing will happen in this case. We know sentencing in the perjury case was set to take place at the conclusion of this case. But Jim Wida, no comment from him or Marilyn Mosby's other two federal public defenders on their way out of court today. Again, no comment from Marilyn Mosby herself. One other note here, this trial for this jury stretched across four weeks. Jury selection was week one. The trial itself was three weeks, a total of 10 days. The jury got the case just before 5 p.m. last night, came back here at 930 this morning, worked as far as we know all day long, and then delivered the verdict shortly after 530. Again, the story here from U.S. District Court in Greenbelt tonight, Marilyn Mosby has been found guilty at her second federal criminal trial connected to the same matter. It was separated, the two cases separated into two trials and moved here to Greenbelt at her request. And in the end, she was convicted on three charges across four different counts in those two cases. Reporting live from Greenbelt tonight, I'm Kate Amara, WBAL TV 11 News. So first we got the false COVID-19 related financial hardships. I've seen a lot of people in America do this. You're trying to buy these Florida homes. You're failing to disclose federal tax liabilities. Okay. And then this happens. Now you've been convicted. So these are federal crimes. You're going to go to federal prison. You'll never be an attorney again. And now, you know, you divorced your husband. Talk about losing it all. And again, this is unfortunate, you know, for black politicians. Um, again, you got to understand that even though you're in these black cities and typically it happens in black cities, like in Dalton, Illinois, Tiffany Henry, we see it in um, in New Orleans, Latoya Cantrell. We've seen it in East Point, Michigan, outside of Detroit, which is Monique Owen. We keep seeing these things with these people all the time. And, and what do we continue to see? We continue to see the downfall of black politicians when you know like, Man, you're going to get found out. You have a public eye on you. There's so many ways to get money when you're um, a politician. You know, without to be in the corrupt way, you can do business. There are certain things you're involved in. I mean, you're you're the you're the city attorney, your state attorney. Now you're going to lose everything behind the BS. And it's unfortunate. It's another powerful black woman that was an inspiration, you know, basically losing out because of money. And what I always tell you guys, people loyal to money. Or loyal to nothing. So, guys, what do you think? It's your boy Shady Jackson back at it again. With another episode of the Celebrity Junk. Appreciate your fire. You just heard the bell. We're out.